I'm a mountain turtle. I go slowly, but surely. I take my home on my back and my country in my heart. Hello, everyone. So I brought you a little something here, my home. Well, don't misunderstand me. I'm an architect, and I know what a home looks like. But when I'm up on these mountains, a tent is the ultimate comfort zone. My tent is my home, sweet home. This is where I would have my morning coffee, enjoying a mountain view, or I would experience existential um, connection and sometimes unexplainable emotions. Imagine sitting in that tent, boiling your water, melting the ice, preparing food, for the past 26 hours, somewhere between the Andes at 6,000 meters. Inside of the tent, minus 25 degrees below zero. And you are trying to sleep. And when you do that, the water would evaporate from your body, creating some of these ice crystal in the ceiling of the tent. And once you wake up, the water, the, the snow actually, would fall into your face. And when I was there after 26 hours, in my deepest moment of frustration, I asked myself, how, how did I get there? How did a girl who grew up during the Lebanese war, number five from a family of five children, very modest, who with no connection to nature, and even traumatized by her mother that all forests would have poisonous snakes. How did that girl would be, end up actually climbing the highest summits of the world? Well, imagine, imagine having a daughter, having a sister, a girlfriend with a dream that is not yours with a dream that is against social norms, what would you do? How would you react? Well, that's my story, and I'm here to share it with you. When I started mountaineering, I didn't even think, I wasn't aware what mountains would teach me. But by the time, I, I can very honestly say that it taught me resilience and a lot more. See, you never know where life would lead you. I never thought that my life would lead me to mountaineering or even conservation architecture. It was totally accidental. What I had was the love of exploration, the curiosity to learn, and a huge imagination to dream. And so it wasn't really about mountains. It was about a passion, about this excitement and the child in me to travel the world, taste new food, experience new cultures. But after 10 years, I, like today, I'm aware that after 10 years of mountaineering and traveling the world, it wasn't just the obstacles of climbing mountains what I was facing, but I found myself in a constant struggle. Because as a woman, I had a dream that should not be mine. And the mountains were there always to lead me, to teach me how to overcome these obstacles. And it taught me these three valuable lessons that I would like to share with you. Lesson number one, learn when to climb down. People would tell you, have a plan, and everything's going to be OK. Have a plan for a year, for a week, and you get, you're going to get it right. Wrong. Up there, on these mountains, a plan is nothing. Many plans are everything. So, and 
I want to share here two stories with you. So in 2009, after climbing a few mountains around uh, the Alps specifically, I decided to take it to the next level and joined a team of mountaineers, all men, and to climb Cerro Aconcagua, Cerro Aconcagua the highest summits of South America, 6,962 meters. And while after 14 days on the, on the summit, actually, sorry, after 14 days climbing the mountains, we got to cholera camp, 6,000 meters, just before the summit. I was one day before the summit. And on such summit day, as we call it, we mountaineers, we wake up really early at 1 a.m., start to prepare myself. I felt a little bit weird. My body isn't like the same, but it was minus 25 below zero in my tent, and I was on 6,000 meters, so it's okay. I continued preparing myself, and just at the moment where the guy, when the guide asked us to leave at 4 a.m., I didn't. I just found out that I had my period. Well, you know, for as a woman, it was a moment of frustration, for sure. It wasn't expected, but um, having your, your period at that moment, that time, it, I felt so weak. I felt the most unfortu unfortunate person, woman, on earth. At that moment, I stayed in my tent silently knowing that my body would not take me 14 hours to the summit. 2012, Aconcagua expedition failed. But Aconcagua stayed on my mind. So after five years of training and I mean, training and mountaineering around the world, I came back to Aconcagua. I prepared another expedition, logistics, Every, everything is set, even got a sponsor for it, teamed up with a good friend of mine, and we decided to climb Aconcagua with no guide this time. So, um, while, while climbing, we, had, we faced five storms, three storms. And one of them, we had to stay in our tent at 5,500 meters Nido de Condores camp for five straight days. So it wasn't really easy, but we had many plans, and that was the key of our success. And after 17 days on the mountains, I found myself leading my, my steps to the summit of Aconcagua, and I raised the flag of Lebanon as the first Lebanese woman. In 2017, Aconcagua expedition succeeded. Here the mountain taught me that no matter what you do in life, no matter what your goal is, your path is bound to change. And you must be flexible. Be flexible enough to find your way through, through it without forgetting your goal. Choose your battle. Lesson number two, listen to your inner child. Well, back to Aconcagua. Today, we are going to climb together this mountain. <laughs> so, when I decided to climb Aconcagua back in 2017, I called my friend, mountaineer, Lebanese-Argentinian, Guillermino. And we decided to hike together up to the base camp. And while going, to the base camp, Guillermina would stop and point at the cave in the mountain. And, and she said, Joyce, in, this, in that cave, six years ago, a group of mountaineers found a body of a boy that was sacrificed by the Incas. And when I, when I, when I heard, like, why they would sacrifice children for, like, why children? I was so confused and shocked. Guillermina would answer, because children are believers. Come on, people. Isn't it so true? Do you remember what it was like to believe in something as a child? Well, the answer of Guillermina stayed on my mind, 
and it was food for thought for the whole journey. And after many, after few months, I was about to abandon my project last November. I wasn't finding sponsors and was ready to just leave my dream. And that's when Henry came into the picture. So I got a call on my Facebook page with, from a lady who asked me to, to send a message to her son, Henry, because he just uh, presented, um, like he's, he just made a presentation about me, about my story, he was inspired by it, to his classmates, because he, th he thought that I'm his hero. So I was like, I'm not calling, I'm going. I went there and the feedback I got from these kids was amazing. Actually, their laughs and, and their beliefs in my project made me believe again in it. So don't you agree with me? Children have this amazing way to remind us that it's in our nature to dream and to believe that it's never wrong to dream. Uh, lesson number three. <laughs> Don't categorize yourself. Well, um, we, we all do this, no? We categorize ourselves, we label ourselves, we, we label ourselves, and we label our abilities. Actually, I was never motivated by my parents, except for my brother George, who really believed, always believed in me. But Every weekend, I would come back from a week, uh, come back home from caving, climbing, biking, full of mud. My mom would tell me, "Kune Bennett, be a girl." And and for me, like, how can I be a girl? What should I do to be feminine? But still, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for the people around me, for my friends, and they would always tell me. Why you are doing this? You, you have a PhD. You would go back to the mountains. You don't want to get married. You don't want to have kids. But here, I want to share another story. Back to Aconcagua. And back to my climb in 2012. I was at the base camp preparing the, lo uh, the, the loads to carry it to the higher camps. And the guide was dividing the, the loads by kilograms, and I was like, I went to ask him, maybe I can get l like few kilograms less, you know, I'm a, I'm a woman. But the guide would take a moment, and he looked at me, he said, Joyce, on a mountain, there's no man or woman, there's a mountaineer. I am a mountaineer. The, summer, the mountains taught me to reinvent myself as an architect, as a daughter, as a PhD holder, as a mountaineer. And now they are leading me to be the first Lebanese woman and the second in the world to complete the Explorer's Grand Slam. And in whatever you are doing, always remember, Learn when to climb down. Listen to your inner child and don't categorize yourself. If a turtle climbed the highest summits of the world, what can you do? Thank you.